Peter Fonda wasn't just an actor, he was a rebel yell on celluloid, a two-wheeled avatar of the 1960s counterculture, and a chronicler of America's underbelly, both beautiful and brutal. His face, etched with both vulnerability and defiance, mirrored the turbulent times that he lived through, while his eyes, like bottomless pools of blue, reflected the searing honesty that burned throughout his career. In a single image, astride his chopper and easy rider, he became a symbol of a generation searching for freedom, their journey echoing across the open highway long after the credits rolled. The reputation of Peter Fonda as an actor could never match that of his father Henry or his older sister Jane. Even taken on its own terms, his career was alarmingly erratic. Its peak was probably reached when Fonda played Captain America in the 1969 road movie Easy Rider, although he took everyone by surprise when, after years in the cinematic wilderness, he gave the best performance of his career and gained an Oscar nomination for Yuli's Gold in 1997. Like his sister, Peter had a troubled childhood. In his 1998 memoir, Don't Tell Dad, he chronicled his difficult, distant relationship with his famous father. Describing Henry's role in John Ford's Fort Apache in 1948 as an unsmiling, bitter, strict hard-ass, he added, When people ask me what it was like growing up as Henry Fonda's son, I ask them if they have seen Fort Apache. Born in New York, he and Jane were sent to live with an aunt and uncle in Nebraska following his mother, Frances Ford Seymour, taking her own life in 1950 when Peter was 10. On his 11th birthday, he accidentally shot himself in the stomach and nearly died. Years later, he told John Lennon during an LSD session that, I know what it's like to be dead a phrase which ended up becoming part of the lyrics for the Beatles song, She Said, She Said. Fonda decided at an early age that he wanted to become an actor, and after studying at the University of Nebraska in Omaha, his father's hometown, he began performing in the local theatre. His first success was as the lead in Harvey, about an alcoholic who believes he sees a giant rabbit. He made his Broadway debut in 1961 in Blood, Sweat and Stanley Pool, an army comedy for which he won a Theatre World Award for Best Actor. Although being his father's son became as much of a blessing as a curse, initially it was no drawback. The rangy, good-looking Fonda, who had something of the laid-back physical grace of his father, made a pleasant enough Hollywood debut in 1963 as the romantic lead opposite the vibrant teen star Sandra Dee in Tammy and the Doctor. In the same year, in Carl Foreman's almost three-hour Second World War drama The Victors, which follows a squad of American soldiers in Europe, Fonda is a new recruit who has to watch meekly as some nasty GIs have themselves a little fun testing their prowess as marksmen on a small dog he has adopted. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. But it was his third feature, Lilith, in 1964, Robert Rosson's strange and intelligent study of schizophrenia in which he played a vulnerable, bookish, love-stricken mental health patient who veers between violent outbursts and extreme calm that he first had the chance to prove that there was another Fonda around to be reckoned with. In 1966, the Wild Angels provided a complete change of image for the young star. In a time of counterculture, when standard Hollywood output was found wanting, Fonda turned away from his father's sphere of influence by going to Roger Corman's independent setup for this hit biker picture. Fonda starred as Heavenly Blues, a sulky, long-haired, leather-clad Hells Angels leader who announces, We want to be free. We want to be free to do what we want to do. We want to be free to ride. We want to be free to ride our machines without being hassled by the man. And we want to get loaded. And we want to have a good time. And that's what we are going to do. The line was sampled at the start of the 1990 primal scream hit Loaded. At the end, when the cops come to arrest some of the gang, his girlfriend, played by Nancy Sinatra, begs him to leave. He replies, there's nowhere to go. 
However, at that stage, Fonda knew where he was going. Following the success of Wild Angels, Fonda starred in Corman's The Trip in 1967, shot according to the posters in psychedelic colour. He plays a confused TV commercial director who takes his first trip on LSD and experiences visions of sex, death, strobe lights, dancing girls, witches, hooded riders and a torture chamber. The trip, which was written by Jack Nicholson, also featured Dennis Hopper as an acid head. It was during a publicity tour for the trip, after smoking some grass and drinking some beer in his Toronto hotel room, that he claimed, I understood immediately just what kind of motorcycle, sex and drug movie I should make next. Fonda and Hopper then conceived, wrote with Terry Southern the three gaining an Oscar nomination, raised the finance for and starred in Easy Rider. Hopper's first feature as director and Fonda's as producer was made for $400,000 and took more than $16 million at the box office, which rose to more than $60 million worldwide in the next three years. The counterculture hit followed Hopper and Fonda, who hit the road on motorcycles in search of the real America, but instead find hostility from small town bigots. The odyssey ends when the two are shot down by a truck driver who despises their iconoclastic lifestyle. Stupidity, corruption and violence are set against the potential freedom of America that Fonda and Hopper represent. Tall, thin and cool in black leathers and shades and wearing a jacket which bore a large American flag across the back, Fonda's Captain America became an icon of martyrdom. From then on, Fonda's career took an uncertain turn, lurching from one Easy Rider ripoff to another. In Dirty Mary Crazy Larry in 1974, he is on the lam in a souped-up car after stealing cash from a supermarket. The film provided plenty of high-speed chases and crashes, as did Race with the Devil in 1975, in which Fonda flees after coming across satanic rituals in Texas. One exception was Spirits of the Dead in 1968, three episodes based on the macabre stories of Edgar Allan Poe. In the one episode directed by Roger Vadim, a frisson was caused by the casting of Fonda as the lover of a character played by his sister Jane, Vadim's wife at the time. Fonda had three tries at directing features, the first being The Hired Hand in 1971, a slow hippie western, which has a masochistic death of the hero ending popularized by Easy Rider. The director himself starred as a cowboy drifter, but he remained off camera for his second feature, Idaho Transfer in 1973. A dirt cheap time travel movie set in 2027, it is redolent of the early 1970s. Fonda returned to show his face again in Wanda Nevada in 1979, in which he and a 13-year-old orphan, Brooke Shields, go prospecting for gold. One of the few interesting aspects of the film is that it was the only time Peter and Henry Fonda appeared together on screen, the latter in a cameo role of a grizzled prospector. From the early 1980s to the mid-90s, Fonda's lifestyle left him virtually unemployable in mainstream films. He picked up a few reasonable parts, but his cool, laid-back style now looks simply cold and bored. Whether out of choice or necessity, he continued to work in independent, low-budget productions, often for a drive-in circuit that hardly existed anymore. But in 1997, Fonda starred in Yuli's Gold, a low-key drama in which he played a Vietnam vet beekeeper in Florida whose quiet life is disturbed by villains. According to Janet Maslin in the New York Times, this film calls for deep reserves of backbone from its terse hero and Fonda supplies them with supreme dignity and grace. However, Fonda could never win. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, had he made such a film during Henry Fonda's life, it would have been about as welcome as Frank Sinatra Jr. singing My Way. But time has passed. We look at the screen and there's Peter, wearing little round glasses and doing a Henry gesture. He looks up, winces a little, smiles a little, and looks shy, dignified, and quiet. 
That's when we realize we've been missing Henry Fonda all this time and just didn't know it. Yuli's gold all but buried the emblematic hippie rebel, resurrecting him as a man of sobriety and responsibility. However, there was still nostalgia in Steven Soderbergh's The Limey in 1999, in which Fonda portrayed a wealthy, super sleek record producer whom Terence Stamp believes had a hand in killing his daughter. This nostalgia is underscored by Fonda saying, Did you ever dream about a place you never really recall being to before? A place that maybe only exists in your imagination. Some place far away, half remembered when you wake up. When you were there though, you knew the language. You knew your way around. That was the 60s. Thereafter, Fonda seemed content to slip down the credits in supporting roles in dispensable movies. Some of his better later roles are when he makes a Faustian deal with a motorcycle stuntman played by Nicolas Cage in Ghost Rider and as an unscrupulous bounty hunter in 310 to Yuma, both in 2007. Fonda made appearances in several horror movies, among them The Harvest as a well-meaning grandfather and House of Bodies, both in 2013 as a serial killer. In The Runner in 2015, a political drama about the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill, a subject close to Fonda's heart, he played an ex-politician whose career was ruined by booze. Unfortunately, in one of his better movies, the old-fashioned western The Ballad of Lefty Brown in 2017, Fonda doesn't survive very long. He is survived by his third wife, Margaret de Vogelaire, whom he married in 2011, and by his children Bridget, an actor until her retirement in 2002, and Justin from his first marriage to Susan Brewer. Peter Henry Fonda was born on the 23rd of February 1940 and died on the 16th of August 2019. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Peter Fonda movie that you like the most or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.